Welcome back ninjas to another 7 Ninjas Studios painting video. Today we're going to be doing this Katachan Jungle Warrior. We're going to be starting with Militarum Green thinned down on his pants. We're going to follow that up with Creed Camo. There will also be Black Templar. Dark Oath Flesh for his skin. Blood Angels Red for some of the details. Skeleton Horde for his shirt. We're also going to be doing some heat effects on his flame weapon, and those heat effects will be accomplished by applying Eandon Yellow, Blood Angels Red, and Shyish Purple. We're going to go ahead and start with this Militarum Green, very thin down, uh, putting it on his fatigues and making sure that that gets into the recess as well. We're also going to put this Militarum Green on his gun, and that'll help blend him together as a cohesive model and, and make him look good. Now we're going to go ahead and take our uh, Black Templar and we'll be putting the Black Templar down on the boots of this character as well as on the uh, barrels of the weapon and that front piece of the gun. We'll be going over that part uh, with a metallic silver, uh, but I do find that I like the effect of uh, silver over the black better than the effect we've done in the past of black on top of the silver. And it really depends on what you're going for. Uh, also make sure we get the stock of the weapon and any of the bits of the weapon we didn't hit before. You'll note there is a part of the stock that I missed and I will come back and hit that a little bit later. Now we're going to take some Skeleton Horde and some Contrast Medium uh, and we're going to put just a little bit of Contrast Medium in there. We don't need much. Uh, this is a small area we're doing. One little dot of Skeleton Horde and we're going to go over his t-shirt and that's going to give it a nice stained brown kind of khaki look um, that I think goes really well. Uh, you do sometimes see these guys with uh, the same color uh, where we could have used the uh, Militarum Green that we put on the pants. Uh, on the fatigues as well, and if we do other Catachans in the future, we'll show you that color scheme. But I like the, the contrast of the green and brown, um, even opposed to the brown skin that we're going to be using in a little bit. Then we're going to take some Blood Angels Red, and we're going to pick out just a couple of details on this fella. Uh, the number one detail I think we need to hit is his headband, but we're also going to hit the Prometheum canister on the bottom of that flamer. I think adding a little bit of detail color to that, you could just leave it in the, uh, you could do it with a combination of the Creed camo and the Militarum, but I think adding the red uh, really has a nice effect. And here, um, I had been being very careful and I suddenly got uh, the Blood Angels red all over that arm and I try to wipe it off and I just keep making it worse. So what I end up doing after a while is just going back and repainting that very pink arm white. Uh, I was really hoping to get through one video where I didn't have to paint something white and this video was not it.
And now we're going to see me taking some white paint, which is the same color as the white primer I tend to use. And I'm just going to be covering up where I made that arm pink by getting that Blood Angels red all over it by mistake. And now I'm going to take uh, silver. I hear I'm using Reaper's Blade Steel, but you can use whatever silver you've got. Uh, Lead Belcher or Privateer Press makes some pretty good silver. Vallejo, Scale 75, uh, just about any silver. I don't get too particular about it. You'll notice I don't give out a lot of formulas uh, because basically I feel like, you know, as long as you've got the technique, it doesn't matter what colors you're using, you're going to get close. Uh, and your, your personal colors can vary uh, quite a bit. So I'm just going to dry brush that on. Uh, this is where I noticed the stock that I hadn't gotten. So I go back and I hit that with the Black Templar to match that up. And I hit a little part of the gun. Unfortunately, I held it out of, out of uh, the frame so you couldn't see it. But I hit part of the gun. Now I'm going to take Dark Oath Flesh and contrast medium or do I do nope this is not the stage where I take the contrast medium I'm sorry I do that later folks take the dark oath flesh and we're just gonna go over his face now if you really wanted to and you really wanted to give him that that painted uh, face paint look like they have in Predator you could also put the uh, Creed camo uh, lines on across his face or even black Templar lines across his face and arms uh, I'm not sure how well that would read uh, done quickly. I think if you want to do that for a character, it's fine. On your standard grunt, it's probably going to read a little bit more like you just got sloppy with your paint. So I tend not to do that. Uh, I'm just putting the Dark Oath flesh down on the arms, uh, around the neck and chest, the face, uh, and it'll, I'll hit the back in a moment. I'll also be coming through in a moment. I'll be taking the Dark Oath flesh and thinning it down and I'll be adding extra Dark Oath flesh into the recesses on the arms. Uh, these arms aren't terrible. They're not the best sculpted arms. The muscle lines are kind of uh, flat where the muscles aren't rounded. They just, the, the lines just kind of carve in. And so without that rounded effect, you don't get as much definition in the muscles. And that does make the next layer uh, a little more important where I take that thinned layer. Now I'm taking my, my brush, a dry brush, and I'm slurping the extra paint out so that it's not too heavy and too thick. I use a little bit of Wildwood on the hair. Uh, Wildwood was not listed in the initial colors because it really doesn't matter what color you choose for the hair. Um, you, I, I went with Wildwood, but you could easily go with Black Templar or any number of the browns uh, that are in the range. Um, I would perhaps stay away from uh, Nasdrag Yellow, but Agaros Dunes, uh, Skeleton Horde, Dark Oath. I wouldn't stick with Dark Oath Flesh if that's the skin tone you use. Note that you don't have to use the Dark Oath Flesh on all of the skin uh, on all of your Catachans. Go ahead and vary it up. Do some guys with Fire Slayer, some guys with Gillum, and um, you know, uh, have, have a little bit of fun with it. I think you can even use uh, Wildwood if you wanted to achieve uh, a very dark African skin tone. Thin that Wildwood down a little bit with uh, contrast medium, and I, I think you could really get a really good effect out of that. So now I'm just taking the uh, a little bit of white and dropping that on the canister. And a moment ago, I used a little bit of silver, the same silver that I dry brushed the weapon with, and I hit his dog tags and, and his necklace uh, that his dog tags are on. And that's just one of those details that's really going to bring out the piece and really make it look alive. So hit the skull on the canister, and I'm going to hit the lines on the canister. And in a moment, I'll also be going over those lines with the and in yellow, um, which tends to orange when it's... Uh, in the thicker places, and that does make it a little bit difficult to see against the Blood Angels of Red. 
So now this is the Creed camo, and I'm literally just going to do some irregular stripes. And we're going to create the illusion that he's wearing camouflage fatigues. If you're not careful with it, you can end up with tiger stripe looking fatigues, and that's fine. At this scale, nobody's going to notice. But a few splotches and blots of uh, Creed camo uh, are going to create that camouflage effect. And once again, I'm way out of frame. I accidentally bumped my camera before recording this guy, and so I have my frame way off from where I was used to working. So I'm going to apologize for that. But at this point, he's like 90% done, and the rest of what we're going to be doing uh, is just picking out details. Here's where I take the end in yellow, and we're going to start the... Uh, we're going to hit that the lines on the canister, just for a little bit of extra detail. Not an essential step. If you wanted to leave those white, they look good in white. If you wanted to leave them gray they, or green, they look good in green. And now here's where I take the E end in yellow and I put just a very thin stripe right there on the barrel or the, the guard, the heat guard of the flamer. Now I take the Blood Angels red very quickly while that E end in yellow is still wet. And I put a, the same size stripe of Blood Angels red right there next to the yellow. And I go ahead and let them blend together at the very edges. That's what this feathering motion that I'm doing here is, is just making sure the edges come into contact and those colors can blend naturally and not forced. And now it's time to do the same thing with the Shyish purple. Very quickly, grab it, put a little bit out, draw it out. Shyish tends to be a little darker than uh, the other two colors. And while the dark purple is a, a exactly the color I want, um, it can be a little bit dark and read as black sometimes, so I made sure to get it very thin on my brush. You can see the full completed effect there, if I help the camera focus by using my hand. And I think that looks really good. Um, you could come in and pin the dots in a little bit darker with a, a purer black. And now here's where we're going to take the uh, Dark Oath Flesh and our Contrast Medium. And we're going to thin that dark oath down, and we need very little of it. And you can see here, I'm just hitting the lines in the muscles. So basically right underneath that, that shoulder muscle and hitting that bicep uh, and the divide there between the, the bicep and the tricep. Um, hit that little, little muscle there in the back, do a little bit on his cheeks. That will kind of just help give his face some dark coloring, but I'm really only hitting the cheeks. I'm not hitting anywhere else on the face. And that's just a real quick, we're just darkening him up a bit, giving him a little bit more definition. We're real close to done at this point. Now I'm gonna take a green paint. I happen to choose Reaper Miniatures Dragon Green, uh, which is a match for orc flesh, uh, just because I wanted a, a nice green. Uh, obviously any green will work, you don't need to match my colors exactly on this one. I'm going over the, the black that I did on the bottom of the base in green because I'm going to be putting him in a jungle scene. Uh, and I don't want any black to show through in case any of the flocking material that I'm about to use uh, doesn't appear. And then I can take a little bit of black and I refresh the edges where I got green on it. I don't care if these two colors blend together. Uh, that when you're using wet against wet, sometimes that happens. And now that that green and black have had a chance to dry, we're going to go in with a ratty old brush. Um, you can see it's very ratty. Um, we're going to go in with a ratty old brush, and I'm going to cover all that green with PVA glue. This is white glue, Elmer's glue, school glue. Uh, you can get it at any any hobby shop. You can get it almost anywhere, for goodness sakes. It's white glue. Mm. So I'm going to put a little bit of PVA glue down, and now I'm going to take some Woodland Scenics Blended Turf. I've got a little tiny container of that, that great big container. I've poured a little bit into here. Uh, and then I'm just going to swirl the figure around in there and then give it a couple of good taps to tap the extra blended turf off. And there's the guy. He's got a green jungly scene. You could do a lot more for his basing if you really wanted to, but I think that's about all you really have to do to make this fellow work. Now I just brush off some of the excess off the bases. 
All right, ninjas, thank you very much for joining me. I had a great time painting this guy, having a lot of fun. I've got a couple more catechins in my box. Uh, I've got some Astro Militarum coming up. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of new stuff. Uh, and we're getting ready to head into a new month. And since uh, August is almost over, that means we've got something exciting planned. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Uh, we hope you join us again next time. Uh, please don't forget to leave a like. Leave a comment below if there's something specific you'd like to see. Some army we haven't gotten to or a specific faction that's a favorite of yours. Uh, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell and join Team Ninja. That's there somewhere i'm not sure which corner they put it in anymore uh but join team ninja check out at seven ninja studios.com we post photographs of our models uh pretty much as soon as they're painted the videos go up on a time schedule every monday wednesday and friday but the blog video the the photos get posted once they're painted so you get to see photos uh sometimes uh, several weeks out uh, if you want to see these videos a week before they're uh, released to the general public, you can catch those on Patreon at patreon.com slash 7 studios. Uh, but everything, nothing is behind a paywall. You will be able to see all of our content. If you don't want to subscribe to that Patreon, that's okay. Subscribing to the Patreon does give me an opportunity to uh, accelerate my video production. I can acquire uh, more models faster, more paints faster, uh, and even take some time off of work um, at my job to uh, paint models instead of working. So uh, if, if you enjoy what I do here, do those things. If you don't, then, uh, you know, don't, don't do anything. Just... You guys have a great time. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope this helps you take your army from gray to great.